During a complete engine overhaul, you will need to replace the crank seal. But replacement may also be necessary when you discover an oil leak behind the flywheel, which will impair the operation of the clutch. We show in this video how to disassemble and reassemble the crank seal. To remove the old crank seal, you will need a puller. This puller has two sides, with two different shapes. We use the narrowest and longest side for this application. As a pressure point, you can use the crankshaft. A piece of rubber will avoid damaging the crankshaft. The puller should grip the inside of the crank seal. Be careful not to damage the inner surface of the crankcase with the puller. Do this gently. With a firm pressure point on the crankshaft and the puller well positioned behind the seal, you can now start to apply force. The crank seal will slowly but surely come free. It should be clear that this seal should not be used again. The puller will have damaged the structure, as you can see here. Behind the flywheel you will find three adjustment rings, also called shims. These are metal rings that serve to adjust the crankshaft end play. They are, on a Type 1 engine, always three shims. If you do not plan to overhaul the engine, you will soon have to reinstall the three shims you just removed. It is not permitted to install other shims, with different thicknesses, to deal with any problems with the crankshaft end play. Replacing the shims should only be done after a total engine overhaul. That is, after grinding the crankshaft and replacing the main bearings. Now clean the inside of the crankcase. Look for any damage that could affect the operation of the crank seal. Once the seal is removed, it is also the appropriate time to measure the crankshaft end play. We do that in our other video series that deals with engine diagnostics. The crankshaft end play will tell you a lot about the degree of wear on your engine. Insert the three shims. The order of them does not matter. They do have to be the same ones you just took out. Here we show the contact surface against which the crank seal will soon push. You cannot push the seal in any further than this contact surface. There are crank seals with and without a dust lip. The extra dust lip will ensure that dust does not reach the crank seal, so that it will retain its sealing properties for longer. Place the new crank seal in the crankcase. Just enough into the crankcase to stay in place. Check that the seal is evenly seated in the crankcase all around. Use a crank seal installation tool. This special tool will ensure that the crank seal is pushed evenly and straight into the crankcase. There are two types, one for standard engines and an extra deep version for engines with longer flywheel dowel pins. We use here, for our AB1300 engine, the standard version. These two tools are not intended for 25 and 30 horsepower type 1 engines. Screw the bolt of this tool into the crankshaft, where the flywheel bolt fits. Use a 36mm socket wrench, and slowly turn the bolt. You can see here how with each quarter turn, the crank seal is pushed a little deeper into the crankcase. See if the seal is pushed in evenly all around. Tighten the 36mm bolt further, until you feel resistance. The crank seal should now be just inside the crankcase. 
That is the point where the crank seal pushes against the contact surface in the crankcase. Now loosen the tool. Feel with your finger if the crank seal is evenly positioned in the crankcase all around. Now the flywheel can be reassembled. We refer for the assembly of the flywheel to video 12 of this series. As an extra, we show how to replace the crank seal on our AJ1600 injection engine. We now use an older tool, which we still use regularly in our workshop. Tighten the threaded rod by hand until you are at the end. Then tighten the nut, the crank seal will be pushed in evenly. Make sure the seal is pushed straight in. Turn the nut until you feel resistance, which is the moment when the crank seal pushes against the contact surface of the crankcase. Then disassemble the tool. Check that the crank seal is evenly seated in the crankcase. If you don't have the special tool, or you have a 25 or 30 horsepower engine, you will have to mount the crank seal in a different way. A standard bearing driver set can be used for this purpose. The stamp has two sides. One side is tapered and is used to mount tapered bearings. The flat side we can use to mount the crank seal. Choose a stamp that is large enough to push well against the reinforced outer edge of the crank seal ring. Make sure that the crank seal is pushed perpendicularly into the crankcase. With this method you have a risk that the crank seal is pushed in at an angle. So proceed in steps, bit by bit, and check each time if the crank seal is pushed in evenly all around. Correct if necessary. When the crankshaft seal pushes against the mating surface, the knocking sound will become slightly duller. Check again that the seal is flush all around in the crankcase. If you don't have tools available, you can use the old crank seal as a driver. We do not recommend this method, as it can damage the crank seal if you do not have the necessary experience. But, it is widely used. Use the old crank seal as we show here. Then with a piece of wood, for example, you can push the crank seal into the crankcase. Check regularly that the seal goes in straight. With this method, you have a faster tendency to knock the seal in at an angle. We have shown all methods to assemble and disassemble the crankshaft seal for all Type 1 VW engines. In the next video, we will disassemble, inspect and reassemble the rockers. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments under each video on our YouTube channel. See you soon.